What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel where we are back on the Ferrari 308 series and we are this close to getting that car through an MOT and back on the road where it belongs for the first time in probably 20 years. So I'm going to head on over there. We'll start cracking through those jobs. But before I do that, I want to share with you another viewer story. <laughs> So one of my favorite things about doing this YouTube channel is the people I meet, the emails I receive, and sometimes the stories behind those emails. This came in from a chap this morning called Rune, and it's all about the 308. He's been watching the series. In his spare time recently, he's been more and more working with his dad, uh, restoring cars. He's just done a Fiat Uno Turbo, and it gives him a lot of quality time with his dad, and that struck a chord with me. It's something I would love to do with my father. And uh, one day I'll do it. Unfortunately, he lives in Spain, so logistically it's very difficult to do it. But you guys can blame all of this on my dad. Uh, it kind of was passed down the knowledge and the passion for cars from an early age down here below the uh, screen. I was down that high when I started to uh, love uh, the prancing horse for sure. And so I was lucky to uh, achieve that. Anyway, uh, Rune has been spending that time with his father restoring cars. And he wants to surprise his father and uh, he would love to do a Ferrari 308 project with him. So he reached out to me uh, for some ideas of where he can uh, look to get a 308. So the reason I'm telling you guys is if you know of any Ferrari 308 project cars, he would like a project car. He would obviously love to be able to do all the work with his dad. So if you know of anything that you think is really good, Please ping them through to me, uh, bargains at rattarossa.com. Use that one and I will pass them over to Rune. Hopefully uh, we can all find a car for Rune and uh, he can have that lovely time with his dad restoring it. Thank you for that one. I've just noticed in the background, sorry, the uh, Rattarossa is being used as a workbench. Uh, actually, let me tell you something. This is not just my YouTube stuff. I've got parts on here for other YouTubers. Now look, I've got a drive shaft for Sam's Figaro. Sam, this needs to go to America. Anyway, let's go over to the 308, start some work, yeah? I've talked enough. This Ferrari 308 project can be summed up with one word and that is definitely perseverance. Check this out. So, problems with our indicators before, we are working, we've got the relay ticking away down there. Clicking over there for the right side as well. Lights on the dash. I'll do a cutting up here of the front and the rear of the car so you can see that working. Uh, our lights, these are working anyway, but you can uh, hear the pop-ups coming up at the front there. That's all good. Uh, dash lights behind, uh, you saw the indicators. The 308 are really notorious, all this uh, ancient Ferrari. 80s uh the dash lights are typically quite dim so at some stage i'll be changing all the bulbs seeing if we can do some kind of maybe an led upgrade there just to make it a bit brighter uh what else in uh wipers screen's a bit fogged up wipers are all working we got those working before uh, but here's another main thing ready watch this so with the uh, stalk We have washer jets. So all that we are left with here that is causing a problem is this. And we know that is simply because uh, we are missing a uh, cable to that. Uh, so that's one last thing to check. Um, and then obviously with the compressor at the front, just to make sure everything's working there. So we've got to get a horn working, but all of this, I am super, super happy is all working and functional again. Um, I've got an ignition switch on order. Uh, to go on the back of the barrel here that hopefully will be coming in the next day or two so we'll fit that that with a bit of luck will mean that the black cable that runs to our block here will then start working again in turn getting our heaters working so i need to fix this i'm going to take that away with me and then now uh, we just need to put that terminal back and somehow rivet it inside there that's 50 pounds um so I would like to try and 
fix that if possible. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just come apart. Um, by the way, I did check this switch gear. So all of our switch gear here on the uh, steering column, all three of those stalks are all working now. So we're really, really happy with that because this I checked was 1400 pounds plus that. So that's near 1700 pounds to replace that if I need to. So uh, very happy, like I say, that everything is working there. So I'm gonna uh, start putting some of this back together, put the door cards on, the windows are still working. I will be uh, taking some of your advice and thank you for all of uh, the suggestions you said. I'll be putting um, some, whatever I can find here in the UK, obviously it's quite difficult to get some of the stuff uh, that you guys use over in the US, over here. So whatever I can get, I'll be uh, lubricating the channels for the windows so I'm going to start putting that back together, start tidying it up in here today. And uh, then all I'm left with is hopefully changing the barrel, getting the steering wheel off. I've got a new nut coming for that. I've got the uh, special socket, which is a hill engineering socket. Uh, that's coming. We'll be taking that off and uh, then hopefully addressing the horn and we're all good. So I'm going to have a tidy up in here and then we'll go back and uh, do a couple more things in the engine and get this car almost ready for an MOT. The only other thing I want to do before putting this door card on the uh, driver's door here is our electric mirror switch. This is not working. I've only got the one electric mirror on the car anyway at the moment. But before I put it all back together, I'm just going to clear up. I've just started to clean up these terminals. You couldn't even see the copper on those before. So I'm just using a bit of wire wool and that's coming up nicely. So uh, see how successful we are with getting this sorted out again it's all uh, gummed up in the uh, connector as well let's see how we right. get on so i've taken it apart and look at those contact points so i've obviously cleaned these bits out here on the end look at the rest of it so i might see if i can clean that up I'll probably take that home with me and clean it up properly Problem. i've also tried my new mirror on here it's going on the car so the euro spec mirror that's been hooked in just to uh make sure it's not just our old US flag mirrors. I've got a feeling it's this, it does look a bit bad. Anyway, I'll take a look into it. This car looks pretty cool, right? Let's have a little tour around. It doesn't often get out this far from the driveway. Ready to go for an MOT. This okay, so I've just glued that crack, put that back in place, just added a bit of electrical tape just to hold it. Hopefully, that should do the trick. One thing I really love with this 308 is these toggle switches. Just love them, they're just so so cool, so period correct. Uh, the other thing I did mention in the last video was about the uh, rear screen defroster. I'm guessing it's one of these. I was just being a bit of a uh, bit of a dork, but uh, yeah, it must be something to do with this. Uh, somewhere along here, I'm guessing, must send a signal to the rear screen. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, okay, so I will need to uh, look at the AC at some point. Everything else works on here. So this, this, this. This, this, this. I'm guessing these, I need to test these out. Aerial doesn't work because uh, there's nothing connected at the back. But that's all good. That's all good. Just fixing the light. So the light is broken. I can probably glue that. Uh, it's only the uh, base here. We are smashing our way through the list of fixes today. Check that out. Let's see if that works with the door, actually. Here we go. Yay. Very cool. So I've just taken a delivery to progress the project on. We've got some new pipes for our fuel tanks. Gonna replace all the fuel tank uh, pipes and uh, pretty much every pipe I can see in there. It's uh, been set on that car for 35 years, 36 years. Uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah, we've got the tool in here, the Hill Engineering special tool. That's 50 pounds. 
uh, but there's no other way I could find of uh, removing that steering wheel nut. Uh, we have a replacement uh, ignition switch, which will hopefully fix our heater problem. Some gaskets that we were missing before for our rocker covers. Uh, we've got a new steering wheel replacement nut, and we've got our missing handbrake cable. So. Hopefully that will be everything we need to get this car now through an MOT. I've also got the uh, side repeater, the old one. This is off an old 308 project. I keep all my old bits because they come in handy like this. So for phase one, just to get this through an MOT, we're going to make this into a uh, UK spec side repeater as we've done on that side. That's going to replace the lens over here. Uh, lovely weather. Uh, we are now going to crack on with it and see if we can get this almost done. Let's start by doing the side repeater. Let's remove that. I already wired the, uh, the bulb in, so it's already part of the indicator system. So I just need to really just change the lens for now. It's just a temporary solution to get this through an MOT. And voila, that's all finished. So all our indicators are working to UK spec. So let's move on and see if we can address those last little bits on the inside of the car. Next, I'm gonna to attempt to get this steering wheel off again. So we've got the nut loose from uh, our previous uh, go at it, but I was trying to save paying 50 pounds for one of these. Uh, and in the end, end up chewing this nut off. It's just basically jammed on there. So. I'm going to see if I can get this uh, socket on and hopefully get it off. Well, let's see if we can get it off. I've got my breaker bar, keys out in the ignition. I don't want to break the windscreen doing this either. So let's see if we can get this off somehow without breaking the steering wheel as well. Whoa, that's really tight. Really tight. No way I would have got that off without this tool. Let's see. Oh man. Seriously, seriously solid on there. Let's try it this way. I don't want to break. I don't want it to slip. And I don't want to end up smashing my windscreen. I don't want to break the steering column either at the same time. So. Ugh. Well, that took a considerable amount of effort to get that nut off there. Anyway, it's off now. So the tool, the 50 pound socket was worth 50 pounds. Uh, okay, so next, will this come off? Yes, it will. So there we go. So one steering wheel off. And let's just have a look at the thread on this steering column. So we're all good there. Luckily, nothing smashed up. I've got a bit of old metal shavings from where I was uh, bashing away that old nut stuck on there. All right, so onto the job at hand. As you can see, a bit rusted up, but let's see if we can clean up these contact points, find out why our horn is not working, and then see if we can get it sorted. Right, so I have cleaned this up as best possible, both sides, all the contact points, I've used a bit of contact cleaner, screwdriver, and this, some wire wool as well. So everything seems to be working. Okay, so if I use my circuit tester, you can just see a dim light on there. You can hear the relay clicking. So it looks like it's functioning at this end. All good, so all our cabling here is okay. Uh, I need to run a new cable from that to the horn, but I think we also still have a problem up front with the compressor. Cable is now soldered in place. Let's just try the button. Okay, so we've still got the relay click in. Now we need to go up front and find out what's going on from here to there. Right, Josh, press the, uh, just keep pressing the horn. Cool. Okay, so we know we got power to the cable down here, so it's not going through the little horn compressor. So this is our next problem. 
Right, so that's the compressor removed. So we're gonna run a simple test, the same as we did with the washer bottles in the last video. So I'm gonna use my battery charger, hook up the terminals, positive and negative, see if we get anything from this. That's our negative terminal in place, so if I apply it, some positive. Right, we're getting somewhere, so if I put power to it now, Compressor. Really strong. As soon as I hook up the air tubes on here, it's really weak. So I think, so again, if I take one air tube off, let it breathe. So maybe these are blocks. Anyway, I do have some spare ones of these as I always do with Ferrari bits, sat at home. So I will bring those and we'll try and put those on and see if that fixes the problem. I will, uh, I could take them off, but they're quite difficult. So uh, see if I can anyway. Next test, taking the little cap off the end. Right, so we have just run a new earth. I've got the horns there. I'm just holding the earth on uh, the body of the car. Go for it, Josh. And again. <laughs> right, so I'm doing a little plan B on the uh, ignition at the moment. Uh, I'm really struggling to get the old ignition switch off the back of the barrel here. There is a screw right up, it's hidden right up here and it's almost impossible to get to. I will persevere, but I'm running out of time. So I just wanted to run a quick test just to verify it was definitely our switch causing the problem with the heater and our black wire. So, wired it all in. I will flick the heater switch. The best way for you guys to uh, see it is if my dash light comes on. And there you go. So that is another fix ticked off the list. Uh, that wasn't a vital one for the MOT, but that is a nicety, especially this time of year when things like the uh, screen fogs up. So uh, we are pretty much done with all of our fixes here. There's a couple of little things I still need to just check on here with my lights. Uh, we've gone a step backwards for some reason, so my side lights aren't working again. So I just need to just check and verify that uh, there's nothing that's come loose or a terminal or something like that. I need to put, uh, get a window uh, mirror sticker to go up here. Obviously the rear view mirror for the MOT as well. Um, and then it's just a case of putting all of this back together. And uh, we are pretty much done on the interior of this car uh, with regard to everything functioning. And then there's a few more jobs to do back in the engine just to make sure it's driving uh, nicely. And then we'll put it through an MOT. So well guys, I need to wrap this one up now. We are so, so close to getting that car ready now and through an MOT, a couple more jobs to do and stage one is finished. Then it's on to stage two, where we're gonna be doing the conversion of the car. And that's the bit I'm looking forward to, because that is the bit aesthetically when it looks great. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Do not forget you can follow me on a daily basis on my Instagram account. Don't forget, send me those bargain 308s, especially bargains at rattarossa.com. Also guys, if you are feeling ultra cool, Grab yourself a t-shirt. I'll put a link to my uh, merch store. It will be on YouTube, but it's taken six weeks for the guys to uh, look at the stuff at the moment. So uh, I'll put a link directly to uh, the Teespring site as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will see you very shortly in the next one. Ciao for now.